everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 3 of tutorial series on AWS Glue. In this video, I will cover AWS Glue data catalog and crawlers. So let's start with understanding what is AWS Glue data catalog. So AWS Glue data catalog is the persistent metadata repository to store metadata information. And each AWS account can have only one AWS Glue data catalog per region. Now since we know that AWS GNU data catalog is the metadata repository, so let's try to understand what exactly metadata repository is. So a metadata repository is the database of descriptive information about underlying data and that data might be sitting in S3 or at any other location. And the descriptive information or the metadata information of data includes information like schema structure of data its physical location, data types, track of how data is changed over time and other statistics. So this is metadata repository. And finally, AWS GNU data catalog is the core of the AWS GNU ecosystem where it will store information about the underlying data for us. And we can interact with that information via different services like Athena, ETL jobs and so on. So basically AWS GNU data catalog is the name given to a group of components that work together to define the metadata repository for various use cases. So which components I am talking about here. So the first one is database. So a database is a logical group that contains a number of tables and the tables hold the metadata information about underlying data. Second component is crawlers and classifiers. So crawlers are created to scan data in different repositories and detect and infer schema with the help of classifiers to create table definitions of the data. Another is connections. So connection is the data catalog object which contains the connection configuration which we need to connect to a particular data store. Finally, the fourth one is AWS GNU schema registry. So it is a feature or component that allows you to centrally discover, control and evolve data stream schemas. So these components together make the metadata repository possible which is known as AWS GNU data catalog. Till now we talked much about metadata repositories, metadata information but now the question is how to get this metadata information into the data catalog. Well, there are two ways to gather and store that information. First one is to create the database table definition and then enter all the information about the data manually. So this is a little complex way. The second and the simple way is to leverage crawlers to populate the metadata information automatically. However, we still need to create the database manually, but then the crawler will take care of everything. So now let's understand the crawlers at the high level. So AWS GNU crawlers are the programs that will connect to the data stores. Then it will use classifiers to infer and determine the schema of your data along with other information. And finally, it will create or update the metadata within AWS GNU data catalog in the form of table definitions. AWS crawler can crawl both file-based and table-based data stores. When you run the crawler periodically, it can also detect if new data is available or if there are any changes to existing data, including the table definition changes. However, the crawler will not be able to determine the relationship among the tables. The crawler can be run on schedule or by a trigger based on an event or on demand. And as of today, the crawlers cannot work with data streams. So this was the high level information about crawlers and classifiers. Now let's try to understand when do we use AWS GNU data catalog. When you want a unified view of the data from different data sources or data silos and you want to keep track of all the data operations or changes in data silos. Another example is when you want to move data from source to destination with certain changes. One more example is when you want to query the data sitting at different locations and as we know that it could be challenging but if you have a unified view of data it means the data catalog then you can easily query the data using Athena via data catalog. From the security standpoint if you want to control access to the tables and databases at a granular level then you can use the data catalog 
together with AWS identity and access management policies and lake formation. Well, uh, these are a few of the points about when to use a data catalog, but there are more. Now, another question that we want to figure out is that how we can access the AWS Glue components. Well, uh, there are a couple of ways you can access Glue components via the console, which is something we will use in this video later on. Apart from the console, you can interact with Glue via CloudFormation, CLI, CDK, SDK, and third party services like Terraform. Now, since we have a good understanding of AWS Glue data catalog and crawlers, let's dive into the hands on implementation. Now, as a part of the hands on implementation, we will create a schema structure for one of the CSV files located in the S3 using AWS crawlers. And in the process, we will create folders in the S3 bucket, create a database, create and run crawler, which will populate the table definitions. So now let's jump to the AWS management console. Now, once we are within AWS management console, the first step is to create the IAM role to provide AWS Glue the permissions to access different resources like S3 bucket in our case. So search for IAM and navigate to IAM management console. Click on roles from the left panel, click on create role from the top right corner. Within trusted entity type, select AWS service. Within use case from the drop down, select Glue. And then click on this radio button, click on next. Within permissions, search for AWS Glue service and select AWS Glue service role. If you want to learn more about what kind of permission uh, does this allow, then you can expand this and go through this permission. But at the very high level with this permission, AWS Glue will be able to access the S3 buckets which contain AWS hyphen Glue as a part of the bucket name for the defined permissions in this policy. Okay, but on top of that, there are many other permission that AWS Glue get. So you can go through this and then click on next. Provide the role name, I will say AWS Glue Data Catalog Crawler. You can provide whatever role name that you want. And then once you are done with that configuration, click on create role. Now here we have successfully created the IAM role. The next step is to create the S3 bucket. So navigate to S3 management console. Now here we are going to create a new bucket, but if you already have one bucket, then you can use that as well. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I will create a new bucket. So click on create bucket, provide the name. I will say AWS hyphen glue hyphen data catalog demo. And I will leave rest of the option as it is. Click on create bucket. Now here we have successfully created the bucket. So let's open that bucket. And within this bucket, we are going to create few directories. So click on create folder, provide the name, I will say data store, or you can provide any name that you want, uh, for example, input data. Okay, then click on create folder, open that uh, folder and click on create folder. And here we will say customer underscore data. So we will also create the database in Glue with the same name that is customer underscore data. However, it is not necessary that uh, it should have the same name as this folder but it's just that it's easy to map things with this kind of naming convention okay so i have a type over here so i will say customer underscore data create folder within this folder we will create one more folder with the name as csv underscore reports create folder and within the csv underscore reports uh, we will upload our data so I have the CSV file that is customer.csv. I'm going to upload that file. So here we have successfully uploaded the customer.csv file. So let's have a look at what kind of data it contains. So we are going to use a query with S3 select. So you need to select this file, click on actions, say query with S3 select. If you want to learn more about query with S3 select, then I already have a tutorial on the same on my channel. So I will post the link of that video in the video description. Okay, so here uh, we need to configure the input settings, CSV, delimiter as comma, compression is none. How we want to have a look at the output. Okay, so you need to configure that and then you can say run SQL query. 
so this is how the data looks like so here we have a couple of columns a very simple csv file right and the columns that talk about customer id gender or the gender spending score subscription okay so this is how the data looks like and this is how even the structure uh, looks like right uh, since we are going to populate the structure of the csv file as a part of the data catalog in terms of table definitions so here we have successfully uploaded the data to this s3 bucket and again i would like to highlight that it is not mandatory to create the database in the aws glue with the same name as this uh, directory that is customer underscore data so it's just the naming convention uh, we have used to map things uh, easily okay so this within data store we have this customer underscore data so it's our uh, database and within that database we have a table that is csv underscore reports so under that database we are going to create or populate the table definitions with the csv underscore report as table name okay and within this uh, folder we have our data that is customer.csv okay so that's all about uh, s3 configuration now as a next step let's jump to the aws glue now once you are within aws glue console on the left side you will see different options so again uh, just to just to highlight right or, or just to recall so under data catalog we have different components which is databases tables stream schema registries connections crawlers okay classifiers so these are the components that we that we talked about earlier right and all these components together make the metadata repository or aws glue data catalog possible okay so just wanted to recall that so now as a next step we are going to create the database so click on databases from the left panel and click on add a database now here we need to provide a few details so the name of the database so as i mentioned that i'm going to create the database with the same name uh, that is customer underscore data so i will enter that customer underscore data again it's not mandatory that you should have the same name as the uh, folder structure but it's just that it is easy to map things with this kind of naming convention okay so this is our uh, name of the database now here you can optionally provide the location of where this database is located so i'm going to copy the s3 uri of this uh, folder so select that folder click on copy s3 uri and provide that information so in future if anyone or if, if we want to know the location of the data for this particular database then we can simply have a look at the location and we can easily uh, locate the data with the help of the s3 uri and then uh, click on create database now here we have successfully created the database now as a next step we want to create the table definitions so for table definitions let's uh, first click on tables from the left panel now here as i mentioned earlier that there are two ways uh, to populate the table definitions so the first one is a little complex way so by clicking on add table here you have to enter all the information manually right about your schema structure your data types your physical location and everything and a little easy way is to populate or create the table definitions using crawler so in this video we are going to populate uh, the table definition using crawlers so for that either you can click on crawlers from the left panel or you can click on this button on the top right corner that is add tables using crawler so let's click on that and create a crawler now here you need to provide uh, the crawler name so i will say customer data crawler add the optional description if you want add the tags click on next now here we need to configure the source so what is the source of our data so in our case it's s3 bucket so uh, the first information that we need to enter is uh, is your data already mapped to glue tables it's not mapped yet so select not yet and then uh, configure the data source so click on add a data source the data source is s3 in our case network connection leave it blank location of the s3 data it is in this account click on browse search for the bucket that we have created so it's aws glue data catalog hyphen demo in my case within data store within customer data i'm going to select this folder that is csv underscore reports because in this folder i have my csv file or i i have my data so select that click on choose and make sure you add forward slash at the end of this s3 path 
Now within subsequent crawler runs, uh, we are going to select crawl all subfolders and then click on add an S3 data source. So here we have successfully configured the data source. Custom classifier is something that we are not going to configure. It's because our data is in this ESP format and built-in classifier will take care of that in terms of inferring and determining the schema of our data. So as of now, we are not going to configure custom classifiers, but in the upcoming videos, we will see how we can configure custom classifiers and infer uh, some different type or different format of data. Okay, click on next. Now here we need to provide permission to the AWS crawler so that it can access the uh, S3 bucket. Okay, so we are going to select the IAM role that we have created in the first instance. So in my case, it's AWS Glue Data Catalog Crawler. So select that, leave rest of the option as it is, click on next. Now here uh, we need to configure the output, right? So where we want to populate uh, the table definitions or the schema structure of the underlying data. So in which database we want to populate it. So now since we have already created the database, so we are going to select that database that is customer underscore data. If you want to add any prefix to your table, then you can add it over here, it's optional. Okay, and then leave rest of the option as it is. As a part of crawler schedule, we will say on demand. Okay, click on next. Preview the crawler configuration and if you are good with that, then click on create crawler. So here we have successfully created the customer data crawler. So select that. Once it is in ready state, click on run. Now it will take some time to populate the table or the uh, table definitions into the respective database that we have selected. Okay, so let's wait. So now as you can see, the state has changed from running to stopping. And if you look at the table changes from last run, then here we have the information that one created. That means one table is created. So let's uh, go to the database open our database uh, that we have created that is customer underscore data and within this we will be able to see the tables so here is the table that is csv underscore reports now if we go ahead and open this table then we should be able to see the schema structure of of the respective data on the s3 okay so this is how the structure looks like so as we saw earlier that we had this columns and and with with respective uh, data types that uh, the crawler has inferred using the built-in classifier so this is how the schema looks like and as of now we don't have any partitions or indexes and apart from this if you want to have a look at additional metadata information then click on advanced properties and apart from that we also have versions over here so tomorrow if there is any sort of structure change okay and if crawler go ahead and crawl that data and update the table definitions then uh, you should be able to see different versions for respect to you know schema changes so with versioning we can easily track that how the data or the schema structure is changing over time so uh, that's it for this video and i hope you have gained a good understanding about data catalog and crawlers at the high level uh, but we will cover uh, different topics and in depth right so this was the beginners video at the, at the very high level okay so guys that's all for this video and if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time